Ghislaine Noel Marion Maxwell is a British socialite known for her association with financier and convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. She worked for her father, the publishing tycoon Robert Maxwell, until his death in 1991, when she moved to the United States and became a close associate of Epstein. Maxwell founded a non-profit group for the protection of oceans, the Terra Mar Project, in 2012. The organization announced cessation of operations on 12 July 2019, a week after the sex trafficking charges brought by New York federal prosecutors against Epstein became public. In 2020, Maxwell was charged by the U.S. federal government with the crimes of enticement of minors and sex trafficking of underage girls. The U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Justice announced on 10 July 2020 that Maxwell was also under investigation in the Caribbean Territory. Chapter 1, Early Life Ghislaine Maxwell was born in 1961, in Maison Lafitte, France, the ninth and youngest child of Elizabeth, a French-born scholar, and Robert Maxwell, a Czechoslovak-born British media proprietor. Her father was from a Jewish family, and her mother was of Huguenot descent. Maxwell was born two days before a car accident that left her 15-year-old brother Michael in a prolonged coma until his death in 1967. Her mother later reflected that the accident had an effect on the entire family, and surmised that Ghislaine had shown signs of anorexia while still a toddler. Throughout childhood, Ghislaine resided with her family in Oxford at Headington Hill Hall, a 53-room mansion, where the offices of Pergamon Press, a publishing company run by Robert Maxwell, were also located. Her mother said all her children were brought up as Anglicans. Maxwell attended Marlborough College, and Balliol College, Oxford. Maxwell had a close relationship with her father and was widely credited with being her father's favorite. According to Tatler, Maxwell recalled that her father installed computers at Headington in 1973 and her first job, was training to use a Wang and later programming code. The Times reported that he did not permit Ghislaine to bring her boyfriends home or to be seen with them publicly, after she started attending Oxford University. Chapter 2 – Career Maxwell was a prominent member of the London social scene in the 1980s. She founded a women's club named after the original Kit Kat Club and was a director of Oxford United Football Club during her father's ownership. She also worked at the European, a publication Robert Maxwell had started. According to Tom Bauer, writing for the Sunday Times, in 1986 Robert invited her to the christening in her honor of his new yacht the Lady Ghislaine, at a shipyard in the Netherlands. Maxwell spent a large amount of time in the late 1980s aboard the yacht, which was equipped with a jacuzzi, sauna, gym and disco. The Scotsman said Robert Maxwell had also tailor-made a New York company for her. The company, which dealt in corporate gifts, was not profitable. The Sunday Times reported that Maxwell flew to New York on 5 November 1990 to deliver an envelope on her father's behalf that, unknown to her, was part of a plot initiated by her father to steal $200 million from Burlitz shareholders. After Maxwell's father purchased the New York Daily News in January 1991, he sent her to New York City to act as his emissary. In May 1991, Maxwell and her father took Concord on business to New York, where he quickly departed for Moscow and left her to represent his interests at an event honoring Simon Wiesenthal. In November 1991, Robert Maxwell's body was found floating in the sea near the Canary Islands and the Lady Ghislaine. Soon afterwards, Ghislaine flew to Tenerife, where the yacht was berthed, to attend to his business paperwork. Ghislaine attended her father's funeral in Jerusalem alongside various Israeli intelligence figures, President Haim Herzog, and Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir, who gave his eulogy. Although a verdict of death by accidental drowning was recorded, Maxwell has since said she believes her father was murdered, commenting in 1997, he did not commit suicide. That was just not consistent with his character. I think he was murdered. After his death, Robert Maxwell was found to have fraudulently appropriated the pension assets of Mirror Group Newspapers, a company that he ran and in which he held a large, share of ownership, to support its share price. 
There were reportedly over £440 million in pension funds missing, which left the surviving Maxwell family members and the British government in a bind to repay the 32,000 people affected. Two of Maxwell's brothers, Ian and Kevin, who were the most involved with their father in daily business dealings, were arrested on 19 June 1992 and charged with fraud related to the Mirror Group pension scandal. The brothers were acquitted of the charges three and a half years later in January 1996. Maxwell moved to the United States in 1991, just after her father's death. She was photographed boarding a Concorde to cross the Atlantic, causing outrage amidst the pension scandal due to the high cost of the flight. Maxwell was provided with an annual income of £80,000, thanks to a trust fund established in Liechtenstein by her father. By 1992, she had moved to an apartment of an Iranian friend overlooking Central Park. At the time, Maxwell worked at a real estate office on Madison Avenue and was reported to be socializing with celebrities. She quickly rose to wider prominence as a New York City socialite. Chapter 3 Relationship with Jeffrey Epstein Accounts differ on when Maxwell first met American financier Jeffrey Epstein. According to Epstein's former business partner, Stephen Horfenberg, Robert Maxwell introduced his daughter to Epstein in the late 1980s. The Times reported that Maxwell met Epstein in the early 1990s at a New York party following a difficult breakup with Count Gianfranco Sicigna Mozzoni of the Seeger Hotel's clan. Maxwell had a romantic relationship with Epstein for several years in the early 1990s and remained closely associated with him for decades. The nature of their relationship remains unclear. In a 2009 deposition, several of Epstein's household employees testified that Epstein referred to her as his main girlfriend who also hired, fired, and supervised his staff, starting around 1992. She has also been referred to as the lady of the house by Epstein's staff and as his aggressive assistant. In a 2003 Vanity Fair profile on Epstein, author Vicky Ward said Epstein referred to Maxwell as my best friend. Ward also observed that Maxwell seemed to organize much of his life. Politico reported that Maxwell and Epstein had friendships with several prominent individuals in elite circles of politics, academia, business and law, including former presidents Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, attorney Alan Dershowitz, and Prince Andrew. Maxwell is known for her long-standing friendship with Prince Andrew, Duke of York, and for having escorted him to a hookers and pimps, social function in New York. She introduced Epstein to Prince Andrew, and the three often socialized together. In 2000, Maxwell and Epstein attended a party thrown by Prince Andrew at the Queen's Sandringham House estate in Norfolk, England, reportedly for Maxwell's 39th birthday. In a November 2019 interview with the BBC, Prince Andrew confirmed that Maxwell and Epstein had attended an event at his invitation, but he denied that it was anything more than a straightforward shooting weekend. In 1995, Epstein renamed one of his companies the Gislen Corporation, based in Palm Beach, Florida, the company was dissolved in 1998. As a trained helicopter pilot, Maxwell also transported Epstein to his private Caribbean island. In 2008, Epstein was convicted of soliciting a minor for prostitution and served 13 months of an 18-month jail sentence. Following Epstein's release, although Maxwell continued to attend prominent social functions, she and Epstein were no longer seen together publicly. By late 2015, Maxwell had largely retreated from attending social functions. Chapter 4 Civil Cases and Accusations Chapter 4 Section 1 Virginia Roberts Dufry v. Maxwell. Details of a civil lawsuit, made public in January 2015, contained a deposition from Jane Doe III that accused Maxwell of recruiting her in 1999, when she was a minor, and grooming her to provide sexual services for Epstein. A 2018 expose by Julie K. Brown in the Miami Herald revealed Jane Doe III to be Virginia Dufry who was previously known as Virginia Roberts. Jufri met Maxwell at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club in Palm Beach, Florida, when Jufri was a 16-year-old spa attendant. 
she asserted that Maxwell had introduced her to Epstein, after which she was groomed by the two for his pleasure, including lessons in Epstein's preferences during oral sex. Maxwell has repeatedly denied any involvement in Epstein's crimes. In a 2015 statement, Maxwell rejected allegations that she has acted as a procurer for Epstein and denied that she had facilitated Prince Andrew's acts of sexual abuse. Her spokesperson said the allegations made against Gislen Maxwell are untrue and she strongly denies allegations of an unsavory nature, which have appeared in the British press and elsewhere, and reserves her right to seek redress at the repetition of such old defamatory claims. Jufri asserted that Maxwell and Epstein had trafficked her and other underage girls, often at sex parties hosted by Epstein at his homes in New York, New Mexico, Palm Beach, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Maxwell called her a liar. Jufri sued Maxwell for defamation in federal court in the Southern District of New York in 2015. While details of the settlement have not been made public, in May 2017 the case was settled in Jufri's favor, with Maxwell paying Jufri millions. Chapter 4 Section 2, Sarah Ransom v. Epstein and Maxwell In 2017, Sarah Ransom filed a suit, in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York, against Epstein and Maxwell, alleging that Maxwell hired her to give massages to Epstein and later threatened to physically harm her or destroy her career prospects if she did not comply with their sexual demands at his mansion in New York and on his private Caribbean island, Little St. James. The suit was settled in 2018 under undisclosed terms. Chapter 4 Section 3, Affidavit Filed by Maria Farmer On the 16th of April 2019, Maria Farmer went public and filed a sworn affidavit in federal court in New York, alleging that she and her 15-year-old sister, Annie, had been sexually assaulted by Epstein and Maxwell in separate locations in 1996. Farmer's affidavit was filed in support of a defamation suit between Virginia Dufry against Alan Dershowitz. According to the affidavit, Farmer had met Maxwell and Epstein at a New York art gallery reception in 1995. The affidavit says that in the summer of the following year, they hired her to work on an art project in billionaire businessman Leslie Wexner's Ohio mansion, where she was then sexually assaulted by both Maxwell and Epstein. Farmer reported the incident to the New York Police Department, and the FBI. Her affidavit also stated that during the same summer, Epstein flew her then 15-year-old sister, Annie, to his New Mexico property where he and Maxwell molested her on a massage table. Farmer was interviewed for the CBS this morning in November 2019 where she detailed the 1996 assault, and alleged that Maxwell had repeatedly threatened both her career and her life after the assault. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 2 Jennifer Arose v. Epstein's Estate, Maxwell, and Jane Does 1-3 on 14 August, 2019, Jennifer Arose filed a lawsuit in New York County Supreme Court against Epstein's estate, Maxwell, and three unnamed members of his staff. The lawsuit was made possible under New York State's New Child Victims Act, which took effect on the same date. Arose later amended her complaint on 8 October 2019 with the names of the previously unidentified women enablers to include Leslie Groff, Kimberly Espinosa, and the late Rosalind Fontanilla. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 3 Priscilla Doe v. Epstein's Estate Gislen Maxwell was named in one of three lawsuits filed in New York on 20 August 2019 against the estate of Jeffrey Epstein. The woman filing the suit, identified as Priscilla Doe, claimed that she was recruited in 2006 and trained by Maxwell with step-by-step -step instructions on how to provide sexual services for Epstein. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 4 Annie Farmer v. Maxwell, and Epstein's Estate Annie Farmer, represented by David Boys, sued Maxwell and Epstein's Estate in Federal District Court in Manhattan in November 2019, accusing them of rape, battery and false imprisonment and seeking unspecified damages. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 5 Jane Doe v. Maxwell, and Epstein's Estate In January 2020, 
a lawsuit was filed against Maxwell and Epstein alleging that they recruited a 13-year-old music student at the Interlochen Center for the Arts in the summer of 1994 and subjected her to sexual abuse. The suit states that Jane Doe was repeatedly sexually assaulted by Epstein over a four-year period and that Maxwell played a key role both in her recruitment and by participating in the assaults. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe was targeted by Epstein and Maxwell for being fatherless and from a struggling family, in much the same manner as many of the other alleged victims. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 6 Maxwell v. Epstein's estate, Darren K. Indyke, Richard D. Kahn, and Nez LLC. On 12 March 2020 Maxwell filed a lawsuit in Superior Court in the U.S. Virgin Islands, seeking compensation from Epstein's estate for her legal costs. Maxwell claimed she had been a longtime employee of Epstein, who had served to manage his property holdings in the U.S. Virgin Islands, New York, New Mexico, Florida and Paris while continuing to deny any knowledge or involvement in his criminal activities. According to the lawsuit, Maxwell was seeking damages for the legal fees associated with defending herself against her accusers, expenses that she claims Epstein had promised to cover for her. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 7 Jane Doe v. Epstein's Estate Maxwell was named in a civil suit filed against Epstein's estate in March 2021 by a Broward County woman, who accused Epstein and Maxwell of trafficking her after repeatedly raping her in Florida in 2008. Chapter 4 Section 4, Dispute Over Release of Court Documents On 2 July 2019, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit ordered the unsealing of documents from the earlier civil suit against Maxwell by Virginia Jufri. Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on 6 July 2019 at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey and charged with sex trafficking and sex trafficking conspiracy. Maxwell requested a rehearing in a federal appeals court on 17 July 2019, in an effort to keep documents sealed that were part of a suit by Jufri. On 9 August, 2019 the first batch of documents were unsealed and released from the earlier defamation suit by Jufri against Maxwell. Epstein was found dead on 10 August, 2019, after reportedly hanging himself in his Manhattan prison cell. Maxwell and her lawyers continued to argue against the further release of court documents in December 2019. Reuters confirmed on 27 December 2019 that Maxwell was under investigation by the FBI for facilitating Epstein's criminal activities. Additional documents from the Jufri v. Maxwell defamation suit were released on 30 July 2020. The documents included a deposition given by Jufri and more recent email exchanges between Maxwell and Epstein, with some of the correspondence from 2015. Chapter 4 Section 5, Court Livestream Controversy In 2021, a court hearing was disrupted by believers in QAnon, who believe Maxwell to be working in cohort with a cabal of child-sacrificing Satanist liberal elites who traffic children for sex, as the proceedings were illegally live-streamed to YouTube. Chapter 5, Arrest and Indictment Chapter 5 Section 1 Attempts to locate Maxwell to serve court documents. On the 27th of December 2019, Reuters reported that Maxwell was among those under FBI investigation for facilitating Epstein. After his arrest, Maxwell was in hiding, communicating with the courts only through her lawyers who, as of 30 January 2020, had refused to accept on her behalf service of three lawsuits against her. The New York Times reported that by 2016, Maxwell was no longer being photographed at events. By 2017, her lawyers claimed before a judge that they did not know her address, they further stated that she was in London but they did not believe she had a permanent residence. Maxwell has a history of being unreachable during legal proceedings. During the lawsuit filed in 2017 from ransom against Maxwell, District Judge John G. Coltle granted a motion for alternative service on the grounds that the plaintiff's efforts to reach Maxwell were persistently thwarted, these included hiring a private investigation firm that attempted service at three physical addresses, sending information to several email addresses.
and reaching out to the lawyers actively representing Maxwell in another lawsuit who refused to become a general agent of process to relay the information to her. According to court documents from a lawsuit filed by Epstein against Bradley Edwards, in 2010 Maxwell had agreed to provide a deposition in the case but reportedly left the country one day before Edwards was scheduled to fly to New York to take her deposition, claiming she needed to return to the UK to be with her deathly ill mother with no intention of returning to the United States. However, Maxwell returned within a month to attend Chelsea Clinton's wedding. In January 2020, it was reported that Maxwell had refused to allow her lawyers to be served with several lawsuits in which she has been directly named in 2019 and 2020, including one by Farmer and from a Rose. While Maxwell's lawyers continued to argue on her behalf against the release of additional court documents from the Jufri v. Maxwell lawsuit, they claimed to not know where she is or to have permission to accept the recent lawsuits filed against her. Authorities in the United States Virgin Islands were unsuccessful in locating Maxwell during the three and a half months they were seeking to serve her with a subpoena. Usually prosecutors consider Maxwell to be a critical fact witness in their lawsuit against Epstein's estate. A court filing from the Usley Department of Justice, released on 10 July 2020, stated that Maxwell was also under investigation for her alleged participation in Epstein's sex trafficking operation in the Virgin Islands. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Arrest in July 2020 Maxwell faced persistent allegations of procuring and sexually trafficking underage girls for Epstein and others, charges she has denied. Maxwell was arrested in Bradford, New Hampshire by the FBI on 2 July 2020, through the use of an MC Catcher mobile phone tracking device on a phone used by her to call one of her lawyers, her husband, Scott Borgeson, and her sister, Isabel. Chapter 5 Section 3 – Legal Proceedings Maxwell was charged with enticement of minors, sex trafficking of children, and perjury. On 14 July 2020, Federal Judge Allison Nathan of the Southern District of New York denied Maxwell bail after determining that her risks of fleeing are simply too great. Prosecutors, led by United States District Attorney Audrey Strauss, have charged her with six federal crimes, including enticement of minors, sex trafficking, and perjury. The indictment charged that between 1994 and 1997, she assisted, facilitated, and contributed to the abuse of minor girls despite knowing that one of three unnamed victims was 14 years old. As of 28 April 2021, Maxwell was being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center, Brooklyn, New York. Lawyers requested that Judge Nathan release her on $5 million bond with monitored home confinement while awaiting trial. Maxwell's attorney reiterated her request for bail on 18 December 2020, her attorneys indicating that Maxwell could reside with a friend in New York City during which time she would be under 24-hour surveillance as she awaited her July trial if she was released on bail. She would not be staying with Borgeson, who has made a secured offer of $22 million to guarantee her presence at future appearances. The bail request will be newly considered by Judge Nathan, who rejected a $5 million bail package for Maxwell in July. At that time Nathan had agreed with prosecutors that Maxwell was an extreme flight risk. Maxwell had appeared by video link before a court in Manhattan on 14 July 2020. She pleaded not guilty to the charges. A naturalized U.S. citizen since 2002 who also holds passports from France and the United Kingdom, Maxwell was denied bail as a flight risk amid concerns regarding her completely opaque finances, her skill at living in hiding, and the fact that France does not extradite its citizens. Her lawyers argued unsuccessfully that she was at risk of catching COVID-19 in detention. The judge set a trial date of 12 July 2021. On 28 December 2020, a further request for bail was again rejected by a judge. Maxwell's bail request was opposed by alleged victim Annie Farmer. On 26 January 2021, a motion by Maxwell's attorneys challenged her grand jury indictment, claiming that it did not reflect the ethnic diversity of the jurisdiction in which the violations of the law were alleged to have occurred. On 29 March 2021, 
U.S. prosecutors added new charges of sex trafficking a minor and sex trafficking conspiracy, alleging that Maxwell was involved in grooming a fourth girl, aged 14, to engage in sexual acts with Epstein between 2001 and 2004 at his Palm Beach estate. Maxwell appeared in court on 23 April and pleaded not guilty to the additional charges, she faces six counts that include sex trafficking of a minor and sex trafficking conspiracy, in addition to two counts of perjury. Maxwell's attorneys have regularly protested about the conditions of her confinement. These include being kept awake by a light shined in her eyes every 15 minutes to deter the chances of her committing suicide, and being denied a sleep mask. 1. David Marcus, protested, there's no evidence she's suicidal. They're doing it because Jeffrey Epstein died on their watch, and that, she's not Jeffrey Epstein, this isn't right. Chapter 6, Terramar Project In 2012, Maxwell founded the Terramar Project, a non-profit organization that advocated the protection of oceans. She gave a lecture for Terramar at the University of Texas at Dallas and a TED Talk, at TEDx Charlottesville in 2014. Maxwell accompanied Stuart Beck, a 2013 Terramar board member, to two United Nations meetings to discuss the project. The Terramar project announced closure on 12 July 2019, less than a week after the charges of sex trafficking brought by New York federal prosecutors against Epstein became public. An associated, UK based company, Terramar, listed Maxwell as a director. An application for the UK organization to be closed was made on 4 September 2019, with the first notice in the London Gazette made on 17 September 2019. The company Terramar was listed as officially dissolved on 3 December 2019. Chapter 7, Personal Life Since at least 1997, Maxwell has maintained a residence in Belgravia, London. In 2000, Maxwell moved into a 7,000-square-foot townhouse on East 65th Street, New York City, less than 10 blocks from Epstein's mansion. Maxwell's townhouse was purchased for $4.95 million by an anonymous limited liability company, with an address that matches the office of J. Epstein and company representing the buyer was Darren Indyke, Epstein's longtime lawyer. In April 2016, the New York townhouse where she had lived was sold for $15 million. Following her personal and professional involvement with Epstein, Maxwell was romantically linked for several years to Ted White, founder of Gateway Computers. She attended the wedding of Chelsea Clinton in 2010 as White's guest. Maxwell helped White obtain and renovate a luxury yacht, the Plan B, and used it for travel to France and Croatia before their relationship ended, in late 2010 or early 2000 and 11. On 15 August 2019, reports surfaced that Maxwell had been living in Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts, in the home of Scott Borgeson, who in October 2020, due to the publicity surrounding Maxwell, stepped down as CEO of Cargo Metrics, a hedge fund investment company involved in maritime data analytics. Maxwell and Borgeson were described as having been in a romantic relationship for several years. Locals in the town of Manchester-by-the-Sea said Maxwell had kept a low profile, went by G instead of her full first name, and had been seen on several occasions walking a Vishla dog along the beach. Borgeson and Maxwell filed documents in Massachusetts Land Court about Borgeson's residence, known as Fippin House, during a civil dispute with neighbors regarding rescinded access rights to the larger Sharksmith estate in 2019. A neighboring property manager attested that Maxwell and Borgeson were living together at the property in question. Others have said they had been seen repeatedly running together in the mornings. Borgeson stated in August 2019 that Maxwell was not currently living at the home and that he did not know where she was. On 15 August, the New York Post published photographs of Maxwell dining at a fast food restaurant in Los Angeles claiming that the Post found the socialite hiding in plain sight in the least likely place imaginable, a fast-food joint in Los Angeles. The photos were later proven to have been taken at a meeting with Maxwell's friend and attorney Leah Safian, who also gave other pictures to the Daily Mail. Maxwell moved to a remote 156-acre property in Bradford, New Hampshire in late 2019, 
where she used former British military personnel as personal security until her arrest in July 2020. At the time of her arraignment, federal prosecutors stated that Maxwell was married, she did not disclose the identity of her spouse. In December 2020, it emerged that she had married Borgeson in 2016.